this was always a hot spot for hunters. Buffalo, there was game here, so people came here a long time ago to hunt this Turtle Mountain. The Métis, you could see why they would fall in love with it, being trappers and hunters. The lakes are so full of fish and, and, and wildlife everywhere, berries, mushrooms, I mean, it's just loaded. The ducks, the geese, the volume that they have coming over. It makes your heart pump. You want to get out there and be part of it. One of my first hunting stories, I was five years old and we lived right along the park. And my grandpa, he said, find some shoes and you can come rabbit hunting with me. And when the kids got home from school, I stuck it in their face that they had to go to school, but I get to go rabbit hunting with grandpa. My dad was a guide here, so this time of the year, he'd be busy Americans hunting ducks at Whitewater Lake. I think when I was 12 years old, he'd give me two shells with the old single shot 12 gauge. And I'd have to sit at a slough and wait for two ducks to swim together so I could get two in one shot. If I got two ducks in one shot and one shell left when I come home, I'd get to go the next time. If I didn't, then he'd send one of my brothers next time. So it teaches you patience, I guess. Maybe that's what his aim was, I don't know. <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> I laugh about it now, but I didn't think it was funny at the time. My dad always looked at his trap line like it was a farm. He said, uh, uh, a cattle guy doesn't go butcher all of his cattle. He's got no calves or nothing to sell the year after. He said, so you don't go take all your beaver. You don't go take all your meat. Try to figure out how many you got and how many you want to take, and which ones, which houses you want to take them from. Farm it and be respectful and be responsible. It's, a, it, it's yours forever. At one time here in the 60s and 70s, trappers made a really good living. The fur prices dropped almost to nothing. Lots of people that could find work close, lots of them kept their trap lines, like my dad. But there was lots that had to move away, so they gave up their trap lines. There's always people that are in need, so be a giver. It's not about taking. Even, even here in, in the mountain, we don't take all the animals. If I see an animal that needs help, I'll, I'll give help. And my family were givers. My dad, my mom. It's a pride thing. You know, if you have excess, then give it to someone that needs it. Don't hog it. That's not what makes a community strong. A community is strong by its people and the givers. The pride is sitting at the dinner table, eating that piece of meat, the berry pie, the berries you picked. You know, that, that's where it's at. It's tougher to get everybody together, but this mountain will never, uh, never be a non-Métis place, ever. Hopefully my kids and grandkids want to carry that on. Some of them seem interested. Time will tell. <laughs>